negotiate, to be the lead negotiator in all the real estate transactions. I've proven myself on a number of Japanese deals prior to that. And so I landed at Pudong Airport with no Mandarin background, no one else except me, and several addresses written in English, which I learned was very useless to the Shanghai cab drivers in order to find my way. Now, ultimately what I learned that first time was that I can be charming through a translator, I can get points across, I can think I've built consensus. So a week later I got back on a plane, I flew back to the United States, walk in the office Monday morning, still a little jet lag, but you know, I was young, so I was bouncing back from it. And I tell my boss, John, I go, John, I nailed the deal in Shanghai. Easy Ma, the landlord there of a large number of commercial investments, um, is going to play ball with us. Everything's great. So the next evening, I get on the phone to one of my key, you know, sub, you know, negotiation team partners, and I find out that Easy Ma is no is not the decision maker. I had spent. A full week, meeting, entertaining, going to traditional dinners with the wrong person. So before we kind of get to this next point, I want to emphasize, ask the question, do we have a deal? Do you really have a deal? And that seems fundamental. In American business, there's a lot of inherent trust. If Darren, I come to you and you say, I want to sell you this, and you say, great, I, our company has a need for this, and we trade paper back and forth, right? We do not negotiate price, terms, warranty, contract. You say, I'm okay, we'll, we'll move forward with this. I say, I'm okay, we send it over to the lawyers, we draft it all up, we sign the contract, and it's done. Sometimes that's not, and Hytham has pointed out, not how the decisions are made. So remember, yes doesn't always mean yes. So just because you said, they said yes in the meeting, doesn't mean that it's always yes. And to piggyback on that, you can't think of this as a singular static process. And what I mean by that is view this as a fluid relationship. This is not a single transaction where you rush to sign the contract and that's it, and then you wait to talk to them until next year when that contract is up or whenever the next contract's up. This is a process, this is ongoing. So keep an open mind. There's a very good likelihood that something internally for them has changed. Maybe their needs financially have changed. Maybe a different partner has offered them a different opportunity. So be flexible and be creative. Next, don't rush. I think we've emphasized this enough, but I'll beat the dead horse one more time with Caballero <laughs> Investments, so horses are part of our business. So we'll beat this one more time, be patient. The biggest mistakes we see clients make is setting unrealistic deadlines. Just like when I went to Shanghai for the first time, I thought my charm, my smarts, could negotiate a deal with one of the largest developers of office property in Shanghai within a week. And I was talking to the wrong person the whole time. So be patient. Finally, less is more. And what I mean by this is, as American business executives, we're taught, it's pounded in our heads, get the lawyers involved, get the lawyers involved, get the lawyers involved, get the lawyers involved. I golf at several golf clubs and I hear about different partners bragging about how expensive their lawyers are. It's almost a bragging right to have a lawyer on retainer for $1,000 an hour. That's not so here. So, let me tell you a quick illusionary story. Imagine you've dated somebody. You found a person attractive, man or woman. You guys date for a number of years. Eventually, you guys decide you want to get married. Wonderful. You love each other. It's beautiful. So on the wedding day, the beautiful bride or groom is walking down the aisle. It's a beautiful day. Music's playing. And the bride or groom comes down and finds that you're not there anymore, your lawyer's there instead. <laughs> Imagine the surprise when you spent years, horse-drawn carriage rides, romantic Valentine's <laughs> days, dinner at Morton's, all to find out that I'm not actually marrying the person I've been courting. I'm marrying their lawyer 
<laughs> who's paid to be mean. <laughs> and so you have to view it differently. The contract will be shorter than you're comfortable with. There's going to be things that are left open that you might not feel very comfortable with that you would never accept with an American company. But you got to remember, things change. It's a very dynamic environment. Just as the schedule might change, like Salute talked about, the terms might need to change. And it's not that they're trying to screw you, take advantage of your niceness. It could be that the dynamic business environment that they're in is changing beneath them. And so this relationship is critical. And finally, and the last point, stay calm. I can't stress that enough. Don't get angry. Don't take it personally. It's dynamic. It's fluid. Accept it now. So now we're going to talk about some of the next steps. Obviously next week, we're going to be planning for your trip. We've set the groundwork at this point. We've gone over in the battlefield what it's going to look like. What is that uh, campaign going to sound like, taste like, smell like? Hopefully you guys have an idea. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be completely ready. Jet lag will get to you. The heat will get to you. Um, so be smart about that. Start getting some reps. And finally, I'd love to open it up for some questions. <clears throat> Darren. So you talked about building trust with them and spending a lot of time. Does this mean that we're going to have to fly over there often? Um, or are we okay with just going over there this one time and then keeping that relationship you know, over the phone? That's a great question. I, I can answer that one. So they expect you to meet in person one time. So if you meet the person one time, I think that would be enough. Okay. So after that, we can you know, talk over the phone. They wanted to see you in person and see how uh, your attitude and, uh, and all the things. Okay. I would say do expect it to take longer than possible. Sometimes one week is not enough. Sometimes things might change schedule-wise. So when we line up your itinerary, we're, we're not going to just have one target we're going after. We're going to have many targets. And the reason for that is, is things are dynamic. So do plan some buffer time. Uh, the investment up front is going to be worth it. So it's worth maybe spending a weekend learning about the culture and having talking points for that next week when you meet that second time. When you're meeting with the more senior people. And so it'll show your deep appreciation of the Indian culture. And it will also show your willingness to learn and be in a relationship. Andrew, you said that yes doesn't always mean yes. This is going to be a fluid relationship. Some things may change. Don't let the lawyer dictate, you know, your relationship. At some point, I need commitment, though. And I need to know what their commitments are, what the expectations um, are for me. How, how do I go about knowing that, hey, there is a solid framework um, for this business um, transaction? Right. That's, a, that's a great question. Okay. I, can, I can take that. So the first, they wanted to build a relationship off the hand, which means in person. And then once you are there, then the real paperwork starts. But whereas in US, the, the first paperwork starts and then you have to go through and then sign it. But in India, you have to build the relationship and then get into the paperwork for the okay. contract. Thank you. That's the difference. And, and, you know, not to say that contracts aren't honored, but I think uh, the reliance of businesses on the legal system there is very, they don't use it. And they leave their contracts open because the judicial system is slow, which isn't good in a dynamic market, and, and B, it's unpredictable. And so, first off, as an American company, you don't want to get into a litigious situation in, when someone else has home field advantage, right? That's the first rule of litigation. The second rule is, um, you know, ultimately, you know, every, every world's a small town, so you don't want to get into a, a reputation for getting into litigation. So once that deal's signed, though, the, the core framework of that deal is usually honored. But be open to, in two years, maybe going back and, and if things change, not creating a, a stir about it. And I think that's, that's, that shows good faith in the relationship. Okay. They didn't get to wrap up, but that's okay. <laughs>
Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, 